Welcome to another episode of Art That Plays and Praise. Today I'll be talking about two different sets of Paul Rubens watercolors and show you how I created this painting using these sets. I'm coming into this product review with a lot of negative biases because of the opinions of a few artists who said uh, this new Chinese pearlescent paint is no good. But I didn't want to form a solid opinion about it without trying the paints myself. So in this video, I'll play around with this shimmering set of 36 goose eye paints and Paul Rubin's traditional solid watercolor pen set of 24 pigments. I'll analyze its properties based on the paint's behavior and share my personal opinions as I test this out. By the way, I had to consult a Chinese uh, wiki page to figure out how to pronounce this word, Gu Sai. So I hope I got that right. Now, let me dive in with my first impressions. The packaging is very thin in information. There's not much description in this box to give me an idea of what I'm getting. There are no light fastness rankings. The Gusai box doesn't even have the Paul Rubens logo on it, and I had to visit the company website to verify that this is in fact a Paul Rubens product. Color names are in Chinese characters without English translations. All you get are numbers in both the box and on the bottom of the pen. Uh, well, for a product that is being marketed worldwide, they should have at least taken the extra effort to get their translations in the product, at least for the color names. Now, the full pants are just about the same size as the ones of Kuretake, although Kuretake pants feel sturdier and not as cheaply made as Paul Rubens. It also feels like Kuretake pants contain more paint compared to this Gusai. On my right hand is the Kuretake Gansai watercolor, which I've used many times before. Still, it's almost at the same level as the Gusai that I haven't used yet. But of course, that's just my perception. I, I may be mistaken, but like I said, there's no information in the Paul Rubens packaging for me to determine how much grams of paint each full pan contains. There's no English literature included in this set, so it is quite difficult to figure out its basic properties. But the online product description of this goose eye paint does mention that it uses natural gum arabic as a binder and that the pigments have good light fastness. Uh, good, mind you, not excellent. So I have a strong hunch this watercolor will fade pretty quickly. Like I said, the box doesn't mention any light fastness rankings, so I'm not going to throw caution to the wind and expose the sunlight paintings done with this watercolor. On the plus side, uh, the packaging looks classy. I mean, the Asian aesthetics in the front cover is very pretty. The whole set is portable enough for the traveling artist. As I'm swatching these, what, what are my initial reactions? First is that the pigment load is weak compared to many other watercolor paints I've worked with, like Kuretake Gansai Tambi, Sakura Koi, Windsor and Newton, and Kisho Gansai. Uh, judging from what you see on the, dye, on the dry pans, you might assume that you'll get the same brightly saturated colors when these paints are laid down on paper, but instead, you'll get somewhat, uh, somewhat muted, less intense version. It's almost like pastel pigments, except for a few colors like the deep interference orange, which still looks vibrant and heavily pigmented. For the most part, you kind of have to repeatedly scrub your brush on the pan to pick up pigments and then layer them if you want darker values. I noticed that uh, most of the colors in this Paul Rubens goose eye have low tinting strength. Uh, now let me give you a bit of a painting theory lesson here. What is 
tinting strength. You can think of tinting strength as the intensity or vibrancy of a color. The higher the intensity or concentration of pigments, the higher the tinting strength. The fact is, the more clumpy or grainy a pigment is, the less tinting strength it usually has. Because a highly granulated paint just means that the pigments were not ground into finer particles. And if you grind those coarse pigments more, then you'll, you'll be able to extract more color out of them. That said, the finer, pigment, uh, the finer the pigment granules are, the higher their tinting strength, and the more saturated the colors will look. High tinting strength is a desirable property of paints because when you mix the pigments with white, or if you add a bit more water to the paints, you want the color to still look sharp or brilliant or vibrant and not muted, ugly, drab, or almost invisible. However, uh, with this Paul Rubens pearlescent set, I can already see from the swatches alone that the pigments are not highly concentrated. Most of them have poor, uh, poor tinting strength. Uh, the paints already look somewhat pastel, so if I add more white to it, the, the colors will lose their depth and intensity. If I want to make the pigments darker, more intense and opaque, I have to keep adding layers. And that just means that this whole goose eyes set uh, can be used up much faster than say uh, a Kurita Kigansai, which has superior tinting strength. Goose eyes poor, poor tinting strength and low pigment load just tells me that this watercolor has more fillers and brighteners in them uh, that dilutes the pigments. So this is not a professional grade set. I don't think so. It behaves more like a student grade uh, set. I, another thing that threw me off a bit is the color shift. The initial paint application gives you vibrant colors, but once the paint has dried up, you get a chalky matte finish with a shimmering quality significantly toned down. Uh, the color shift might pose a problem for some artists, so it is best to create a swatch so you know what to expect going forward. If you haven't noticed already, Lay Down is quite streaky, and this has something to do with the pigment's particle size. There's a science to this, which I'll try to explain in simple terms. You see, watercolor pigment particles come in different sizes, which are measured in microns. One micron is equivalent to one millionth of a meter. Just to give you a general idea, a strand of your hair is about 100 microns in diameter. Now, a particle of ultramarine blue pigment is about 5 microns in size, and a particle of cadmium red or cadmium orange is about 1 micron. They're pretty small. However, most iridescent pigments like this one in this Paul Rubens goose eye, they're about 100 microns, the same diameter as a strand of your hair. Pearlescent paints are coarse and granulated, and that's why when you paint with this pearlescent set, you can actually see some clumps, even without the aid of a microscope. Just with your naked eye, you can see the powdery, grainy texture of the watercolor. And because it's clumpy, those pigment part particles cannot easily penetrate the paper fibers, unlike other watercolors which have finer, well-ground pigments. Smaller pigment particles can easily penetrate the, pa the gaps in paper fibers, and we see that as staining. As you run your brush on the paper, you'll see the paint staining the paper in a smooth way, just like what you get when you're making a background wash on your painting. But what happens with this goose eye paint? Since this is more granulated and coarse, the pigment particles just get tossed around when you move the brush. It's easy to lift the pigments because they don't quickly sink into the paper fibers. The goose eye paint doesn't stain the paper in the same smooth manner that staining pigments do. Uh, the powdery pigments behave pretty much like, 
Like when you're sweeping dirt from your floor, you know, the more you sweep the brush, the more you push the pigments away from the paper fibers. And the end result is a streaky or textured patch of color, which is it's actually fine, only if that's the effect you're aiming for. But if you want some visual variation in your painting, uh, then this streaky granulating watercolor set is perfect for you. Now take a closer look at this swatch. Notice how uneven the paint swatches are. They look uneven and streaky because some portions of the paper got stained while the other parts were not. Some pigment particles were absorbed into the paper fibers while some were not. Bottom line is, if you're hoping to create a smooth and evenly distrib distributed wash for your background, I'm afraid it will be difficult to achieve that result with this goose eye paint. Science tells us that the more grainy a pigment is, the less staining you achieve and uh, the finer the pigment particles are, the better the staining. Um, it's difficult for me to say categorically if I don't like the goose eye or if I like the goose eye. Because an artist's relationship with a watercolor set develops over time. It's not always a love at first try. <laughs> uh, the Paul Rubens pearlescent paints may not behave the same way I expected it to, or it may not have the same properties as the Japanese, uh, Japanese Gansai paints that I absolutely love. But understanding its unique properties and how it behaves on paper can help me determine what painting techniques I can employ to bring out this watercolor's best features. Uh, since I know I know already that most of the paints in this set are non-staining or that their high granulation will give textured backgrounds and not smooth washes, then I won't get frustrated with them when they're not doing what they're not capable of doing. Since I already know that these paints dry to a chalky matte finish, then I won't get frustrated when it's easy, it isn't glossy because these paints were not formulated to be glossy. I'll just have to adjust my expectations and do the extra step of applying gloss varnish if that's the look I'm aiming for in my painting. So I guess what I'm saying is, know before you go. Know your paint set first by swatching and experimenting. Don't be quick to hate the goose eye pan set just because it isn't tailored to perform exactly like a traditional watercolor set. Know the goose, goose eye's unique features and adjust your painting techniques accordingly and practice mixing and layering colors. Play around with the palette and build upon its strengths. For all you know, you just might discover a different painting style or, or technique that you can add to your creative skill set. Honestly, when I first tried Kuretaki Gansai paints, I didn't love them right off the bat either. The pigments were too opaque and performed like gouache. But the more I experimented with the Gansai Tambi, the, the moment I appreciated the unique properties of their pigments, their tinting strength, vibrancy, staining ability, and whatnot. I learned to work with them and eventually fell in love with Kuretake. Now let me show you something. Um, while making the goose eye swatches, I made sure I washed my brush after every paint application. But look at this tub. There are hardly any dyes in this container. The water is almost clean. All you see are those tiny glitters that sank at the bottom. I'm no pigment special, specialist, but I'm, I'm guessing that these are flakes of mica coated with uh, metal oxide. Now compare this with the wash tub I used while swatching Paul Rubin's non pearlescent set. You can see that there's a lot more pigments in the water. This to me was, was so interesting. Um, it just tells me that the Paul Rubin's traditional paint set has a lot more tinting strength than the goose eye. Anyway, while, while working on my illustration for this video, I found that uh, using the goose eye in tandem with the traditional Paul Rubens palette worked pretty well. 
I, I mean, they mix together beautifully in a ceramic palette and they complement each other. Uh, whatever pigment load weakness the goose eye has is uh, properly compensated by the vibrant and uh, more intense tints of the non pearlescent set. So you can achieve different color values by using them side by side. The 24 paint set applies smoothly and it's not granulated. So you can easily create background washes with it. The paint stains well. Well, generally it's an okay watercolor set. It's beginner friendly and easy enough to manipulate for painting studies. Uh, there's nothing spectacular about it that will make me grab this set instead of my Gansai pan, uh, Tambi paints. One thing I notice is that uh, this paint runs out pretty fast. Notice this black. Uh, I only used it for the chalkboard and I mixed it with some of the pearlescent goose eye. But see, see how there's a dimple on it already? Considering that the paint pans are way smaller, I can foresee this set getting used up in no time. One thing that's good to know is that the Paul Rubens watercolor can take masking fluid uh, without sustaining damage. While testing this paint, I realized that white ink pens don't perform well on top of the Paul Rubens black. The gel pens produce grayish lines, as you can see in some portions of my blackboard. So although it was more laborious and time consuming to use masking fluid on the chalkboard illustrations, uh, the white of the paper stood out more um, than the white of the pen. Uh, just so you know, I've used this jelly, pen, jelly roll pen and Uniball Signal in many painting projects and they never failed me before. But for some reason, it's not adhering well to Paul Rubens paints. Um, one thing I love about the goose eye is that the shimmering colors reflect the different dimension depending on how you tilt your paper and how the light hits this, the paint. Like you see bits of purple on the pink or you'll see tints of gold in the green paint. You don't get just one solid color. There's a lot going on in, in the pan. I mean, this reminds me of the shimmering fountain pen inks like those made by Diamine or Jacques Herban, where you get a fusion of colors in one bottle. This makes your painting look very interesting. So if you'll notice while I'm working on my illustration, sometimes the painting looks undersaturated because my light is hitting the paper directly from overhead. But if you tilt the paper, you'll see the richness of the colors and the sheen it produces. So yeah, I love that. All right, friends, that's it for this product review and art demo. As you can see in my painting, I played around with the goose eye set and used its inherent weaknesses to my advantage, knowing that the paint is streaky and can't possibly give me smooth backgrounds. I, pers I purposely made the wall mottled and highly textured. I guess what I'm saying is that knowing your palette before you start your painting can eliminate a lot of frustrations. Understand the paint's weak tinting strength or, or weak staining ability or propensity to shift in color once dry. Then adjust your painting techniques accordingly. So do I recommend these Paul Rubens watercolor sets? I, I'd say there definitely was a learning curve involved in using the goose eye. I had to adjust my painting strokes and layering to make it work. So if you want to expand your skill set and challenge yourself with different watercolor styles, I'd say go for it. Try the goose eye. But if you're looking to invest on your first watercolor set, I say go elsewhere. You're better off with a, a Gansai Tambi paint that is uh, less finicky and more predictable in performance. Paul Rubin's traditional non-shimmering watercolor set, however, is a good starter set for students. It's easy enough on the budget if all you need uh, all you need it for is to practice your watercolor painting skills. 
Okay, I hope you learned something today. Thanks for watching. This again is Ginger from Art That Plays and Praise. Take care and see you again soon.